To camouflage oneself is to use any material that helps in the process of blending into the surrounding environment. In this documentary, military experts demonstrate step by step how to make a variety of camouflage systems, the ghillie, the yeti, and the bush rag. This video covers the materials needed and how to manipulate these materials to create combat effective camouflage. This video also covers stalking and movement tactics, face painting, and how to conceal equipment. In the wilds, it is survival of the fittest, and often the game is won by any animal who can remain unseen. In this process, animals have evolved with pigmentation patterns, which help to break up the general outline or shape of their bodies. Giraffes, cheetahs, and zebras are among the many animals who have evolved with these patterns of camouflage. Another important element of concealment is movement. What doesn't move usually will not be seen. The old axiom stands, the eye is drawn to movement. If an animal must move, say a lion, to take a better stalking position, then a steady and slow movement is usually employed. Other animals have been given genetic advantages, like the baby Thompson gazelle, which is born without a scent, and which will instinctively hide when its mother is away. Baby cheetahs are born with extra long fur on the top of their backs, so that they may blend into grass better when hiding. And there seems to be a host of other specialty acts which animals employ to remain hidden. The African dung beetle, however, is just trying to take dinner back home. Of course, four-legged animals are not the only ones who have learned to hide themselves. Man, too, has learned the art of concealment, blending and moving with skill. Early Pleistocene hunters could move closer to their prey. So now grab a paper and pen as military experts demonstrate to you the art the of concealment. Of First thing uh, we're going to need, obviously, some type of clothing to attach our camouflage material to. And we'd like to recommend a uh, flight suit. However, if you don't have access to a flight suit, you can use an old army uniform such as BDUs or old jungle fatigue. But here before you see in various stages of preparation, we have four uh, different ghillie suits. The flight suit's kind of unique in the fact that it's a one-piece item. You don't have to worry about getting branches, things like that, down into your uh, groin area, up underneath your shirt, and that's why we like to go with that. And also, it fits a little more comfortable and a little more snugly than a two-piece clothing would. As you can see here, what we've started with the materials need paint, dye for your burlap, also quilting needles. They can be straight or curved, as you see here. Need unwaxed dental floss. Again, the reason we use unwaxed dental floss is because it's a very strong tensile strength thread and it doesn't rot. <clears throat> you don't want to use waxed dental floss because it won't hold a knot because it's such a slick uh, line that the knots won't stay in it, so use unwaxed dental floss. Another important material is shoe goo. Okay, you can use this for actually attaching netting or the patches like you see on some of our other uh, ghillie suits as we go along. Another expedient you can use instead of dental floss is nylon fishing line. Again, the reason for this is because of the high tensile strength and it will not rot. And the last thing we'll be needing here in the line of uh, man-made materials is an X-Acto blade or a uh, pair of scissors. Now we talked about the man-made store items. By the way, all of these items you can get from any type of hardware, uh, grocery store, or fabrics and craft center. And relatively inexpensively, I'd say this whole pile of stuff here probably wasn't over 20 or $30 altogether. And the flight suits themselves, uh, depending on where you go, whether it's a surplus or a military clothing and sales store, probably run you in the neighborhood of 30 to $40. Okay, moving over here to the uh, actual suits themselves. We started and we're in various stages right here and we'll talk you along as we go. The material that we're gonna be tying on to the ghillie suit itself you can get from a variety of sources. This is store-bought 
uh, what they call moulage, okay, or material camouflage. And all it is is burlap cut into one inch wide strips, rolled up in a nice convenient roll like this and dyed various colors. However, if you don't have access to this stuff from a power military store, you can just take a regular burlap bag like they use for uh, coffee bags, uh, sandbags, whatever. And you can see here what we've done is taken some of the dyes that we've had and we've dyed them various earthy tone colors. You want to stay away from real bright or unnatural colors. You want to stick with your earthy tones. Don't get into the hot pinks or uh, flamingos or anything like that or pastels. You want earthy tone colors because that's what you find out here in nature. One of the other important things that you're going to need is some canvas. As you can see, as we started on this suit here, we shoe goo a piece of canvas from an old sea bag or duffel bag onto the front around the knee area because you're going to spend the majority of your time with a ghillie suit crawling across, uh, along the ground. So you need to reinforce the knees, the chest, and the elbow areas. So you can see we started this one, and over here on this suit that's nearly complete, we have the canvas on all the portions of the suit that need reinforcement. Now, the uh, suit itself, as far as the canvas goes, you can attach it by sewing or shoe gluing. That one's attached with shoe goo. This one's attached with uh, sewing, or sewing machine, rather. And you have to use an industrial-grade sewing machine like they use for uh, rigging of parachutes or sail making because it is very thick fabric, and you don't want to break your wife's sewing machine or your friend's sewing machine. Okay, and one of the other things that you're going to do that the reason we have spray paint is once you have your canvas all done, what you're going to do is spray paint the front just to break up the color a little bit. Doesn't have to be anything fanciful. Again, you can see there's no uh, science to it. You're just breaking it up a little bit with a little splotchy pattern. Next area you want to talk about is actual headgear that the uh, sniper or cameraman is going to be using while wearing the ghillie suit. There's a variety of different ways you can attach headgear or have a separate piece. First one we'll talk about is an actual separate hat. And what I've done is I've taken a hat, as you can see from the inside here, and I took some netting, again, some of the moulage material, just plain uh, green netting. And if you don't have access to this, you can use the military camouflage net. All you have to do is cut off the rubber camouflage, ensure that you remove these little rings that are on here, okay, that attaches the camouflage to the netting, because again, you don't want metal to give your position away. All right, and you can sew that directly onto your hat. Now this one I had a different type of netting, but it really doesn't matter which type of netting you use. You could even go to a civilian uh, fishing supply store and get some of their netting. But again, you want it in the colors, earthy colors, greens, blacks, browns. Once we've sewn it on and I attached this one with dental floss, <coughs> you're gonna go ahead and start putting your burlap strips on. All you do is make a small hole in the net and tie your burlap material on in an overhand knot, nothing fancy. Once you have the burlap on, and you want to make sure you cover as much as you can. You don't want any of the brim or the bill of the hat exposed for the reason you're trying to. That's the whole purpose behind a ghillie suit is you're trying to break up the human outline. You want no sharp angles because there aren't really any in nature. So you want a moundy appearance. Once you have all your burlap attached, then you're going to go ahead and start fraying it. Just like that. That way, when this stuff starts to lay on there, <clears throat> you don't get the nice square rectangular pieces like you have that's apparent right now. We still have to fray the rest of this for it to look proper, but you get the idea. 